Kuchiyo se no Jutsu, the summoning technique, is a C-rank space-time ninjutsu used for summoning creatures or objects to the location of the user. Due to its incredible amount of versatility and the aspect of choice that it provides its users with, the summoning technique is one of the most widely used ninjutsu in the entire Naruto world. The technique's ease of use has likely contributed to this as well, as the procedure that a person has to perform in order to have access to the summoning technique is very simple. As a matter of fact, it might be one of the easiest things for a ninja in the Naruto world to learn. All a person has to do before they're ready to use the summoning jutsu is sign a contract with a particular group of animals. This is a literal contract, not a figurative one, and it comes in the physical form of a scroll that a person has to sign with their blood. Once the contract has been signed, boom, everything's good to go. From this point forward, the person who signed the contract will be able to freely summon any animal or object from the group that they signed the contract with, though it is required that they make a blood offering every time the technique is used. The blood offering is nothing big though. As a matter of fact, pretty much all users of the summoning jutsu are able to bite their finger to draw enough blood for the offering, so yeah, it really isn't difficult to do at all. Now, all of that said, there are a couple of caveats that make using the technique a bit more difficult than it may seem at face value. The biggest one is that the power of the creature or object summoned is directly proportional to the amount of chakra used to summon it. This means that effective in-combat uses of the technique require not only a whole lot of chakra at a person's disposal, but a lot of control over that chakra. For example, when first learning how to use the technique, Naruto is attempting to summon a giant frog, like the size of a really big chunk of forest, and and could barely manage to summon a tadpole. Meanwhile, Madara was able to easily summon the nine tails, so yeah, I think you get the comparison here. This might not be a problem for some people, as not everybody wants the ability to summon giant kaiju monsters. Just take a look at Kakashi, he's perfectly fine just summoning a group of tiny dogs. But it is worth noting for the sake of making it clear that not everybody can summon gigantic killer death monsters. The other most notable weakness of the summoning technique is that summoned creatures don't have to listen to their summoner. Gamobuntu made this very clear to Naruto, as he wanted no part in being told what to do by a little genin. So when attempting to summon incredibly powerful creatures, it's in a shinobi's best interest to earn that creature's respect. This weakness doesn't apply to objects though, which the summoning technique is clearly capable of transporting. Users of it can summon shuriken, gigantic rashomon walls, puppets, and even a torture chamber. So, I mean, yeah, like really, if it exists, you can summon it. Without a doubt, the best example of the jutsu's versatility and potential power is the impure world reincarnation technique, which, well, I explained everything that technique does in a separate video, so maybe you might want to go check that out. Anyhow, that's gonna be all for today. Thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. If you do decide to subscribe, well, hopefully I'll see you in my next video. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. As always, hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll talk to you later. Swaikage out. Bye.